it's a rare thing for me to just feel that instant sort of gut feeling, I've got to do this. And to be honest, I felt this 20 pages into the script. I had met with Lisa, so to be fair, I had met with her, I'd seen some of the vision board, she already was showing me some of the visuals. I understood what the movie was about in general, but I hadn't read the script. And I was already excited about it. I was excited about the world of the film. I was excited about the character and really excited about her uh, as a writer director. I think she's incredibly talented, but when I met her in person, she just gave off a, an air of confidence and surety, not only about the material, but how she was gonna tackle it, her passion for it, um, how many years she'd spent on the film, um, which I believe originally she was just going to write and have someone else direct, and then as Westworld became successful, she had the opportunity to direct it. So Lisa was certainly a huge part of that. What attracted me beyond Lisa, I think, was a movie that felt so original. I think audiences more and more are going to the movies to see something they haven't seen before, to be immersed in a world that they don't know. They want to go on a journey that they don't expect. And this is what you get with this, the world of the film, set in the future where Miami is now pretty much underwater. Think Venice, but in Miami, where things are so hot that you people want to, uh, well, they only can live at night. It's too hot to live during the day. Um, it's, it's science fiction in that there are these machines that don't exist now, but you can certainly believe the world of this film is the world we're going to be living in in 20, 30 years' time. So the world of the film really was exciting, but I think it was the originality and the fact that I had no idea where this story was going. And just when I thought I'd worked it out, I would get massive surprise and the story would zig and then it would zag. And I just think it is... Obviously, I'm not going to give it away, but one of the best endings I've read in a script for a long time. This is a romance, and the, that romance exists on more than one level. But one of the levels is a relationship between my character and May, played by Rebecca Ferguson. And Rebecca is one of the most talented actors out there. She's in ridiculously high demand. After doing The Greatest Showman, I've suggested her to be on several movies, but she's way too busy doing other things. In this movie, she plays a very mysterious, femme fatale character. You are drawn in, there's a mystery about her, there is obviously a sexiness and a, 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 a mercurial quality about her and underneath it all a vulnerability. It's got a hard edge, uh, but there's this vulnerability that she gradually sort of unveils uh, through the movie, but never really giving away that mystery. And it's completely enticing to Nick Bannister. It's completely enticing to Hugh Jackman, and I think it'll be completely enticing to the entire audience. She somehow draws you in effortlessly. The time is no longer a one-way stream. Memory is the boat that sails against its current. And I'm the oarsman. You're going on a journey. All you have to do is follow my voice. Arson, bribery, murder. People love their secrets. But memories, even good ones, have a voracious appetite. Have that moment seared in an endless loop in your mind. Don't go down this path. Stay here, in this life. Reset.